liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Let us pray. Father God, we remember this day, 9-1-1-2001, as the American lives were changed forever. We pray for all the lives that was lost. We pray for all those who survived this tragic event. We pray for all the families who lost loved ones. We pray, Father, even after all the, the years have went by, that you will have mercy upon us. We pray for peace and understanding during this time. And now, Lord, we pray for this meeting, that you would bless us as we begin this evening. We ask all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Flores and Mr. Rector. Um, and um, for that remembrance in the invocation today, as the nation and the state of Texas encourages um, organizations, municipalities at every level to recognize this day um, in observance. Uh, Patriots Day is a, was declared by our U U.S. Congress um, and it was further reiterated, their observance was further reiterated by our governor for today. So thank you again, Mr. Rector. At this time, um, we will recognize any public testimony and for today, we do not have any that have signed up. Any members of the public here wishing to speak? Okay. It's our pleasure to move on for our district recognitions. For our Panthers and Employees of the Month, we will have our Vice President, Mr. Molinax, present, and our Secretary, Mrs. Hill, to present the recipients for this month. Okay, first up for Falk Elementary, we have Ella Flores. She is a second grade student at Falk Elementary. Ella is a delight to have in class and is always willing to help others. Ella has attended Falk since pre-K and has really come out of her shell. She enjoys reading books, so the library is her favorite place to visit in the school. We are so proud to have Ella as our Panther of the Month. <laughs> Congratulations, Ella. Next up, we have Hayden Smith. Hayden is a fourth grade student at Charlie Marshall Elementary. Hayden has already shown his true leadership qualities. He is responsible, respectful, as well as patient and kind. He has been working extremely hard in his classes, and we are very proud to have Hayden as our Panther of the Month for Charlie Marshall Elementary. <laughs> Next, we have Miguel Gutierrez. Miguel is an eighth grader at AC Blunt Middle School. Miguel is a hard worker and is always on time. He completes his assignments with a good attitude, is polite and courteous, and always willing to help fellow classmates and teachers. AC Blunt is proud to call Miguel our Panther of the Month. Next, we have Nicole Kadina. Nicole is a ninth grade student at Aransas Pass High School. Nicole has been a positive addition to the campus. She's always prepared and always willing to try her best. 
She participates in extracurricular activities where she is a vital part of the volleyball team. Nicole is a joy to have in school and her hard work and dedication is what takes it is what it takes to be a Panther. Congratulations, Nicole. <laughs> Now we will move on to our employees of the month. First, we have Heather Heslip. <laughs> Ms. Heslip is a second grade teacher at Falk Elementary. She has been in education for 18 years and is in her second year at APISD. She is a fabulous teacher who cares deeply about her students. Falk Elementary is delighted to have Ms. Heslip on our team. <laughs> Next, we have Amanda Sides. Amanda is a fifth grade teacher at Charlie Marshall Elementary. This is her 10th year with APISD, and we are so lucky to have her on our team. Miss Sides radiates such a positive attitude. As you walk into her classroom, you can feel her welcoming and warm personality that includes a compassionate and optimistic mindset for the growth of her students this year. We are proud to have Miss Sides as the Charlie Marshall Elementary Employee of the Month. Next, we have Justin Hodge. <laughs> Mr. Hodge is the adaptive education teacher at AC Blunt Middle School. Mr. Hodge has a great attitude about work and shows up every day with a smile on his face. He often cooks for the <laughs> staff, knowing how important community is in the workplace. Mr. Hodge always goes above and beyond to make sure his students have what they need to be successful. We are proud to have Mr. Hodge as our AC Blunt Employee of the Month. <laughs> Next, we have Mr. Justin Taylor. <laughs> Coach Taylor has been chosen as the Aransas Pass High School Employee of the Month. Coach Taylor is more than a football coach and athletic director. He is a great leader of athletes. He teaches them to do the right thing in all situations, even when others are being negative towards them. He teaches them to do their best and to treat others right. He teaches the coaches to do the same. We are lucky to have him as our example both for student athletes and coaches. He is exactly what anyone would want for their child in the athletic program, someone to look up to. <laughs> Next, we have Tammy Shedd. <laughs> Ms. Shedd is the system administrator for Aransas Pass ISD. Ms. Shedd has worked tirelessly for the past year to allow the district to have a seamless transition in our student information system from Tyler Sis to Skyward. Tammy successfully coordinated the transfer of student data, training for all district staff, as well as countless hours of work behind the scenes, ensuring the district was prepared to use the new system beginning this school year. We are incredibly proud to name Ms. Shedd as District Administration Office Employee of the Month. We have Carol Perez. <laughs> Ms. Perez is the Aransas Pass High School morning custodian and has been with APISD for over 10 years. Ms. Carol is an outstanding, hardworking employee and is always willing to help when we need her. She has a I can do it attitude, go get her and can't do anything without her. Thank you, Carol. We appreciate you and your hard work. <laughs> and that concludes our student and employees of the month for September. Thank you, Mrs. Hill. Thank you. Mr. Molinax, and congratulations to all of our Panthers and Employees of the Month. 
Keep up the great work. We're now ready for our next agenda item, which is recognition of Mr. Philip Hyatt for support of the APISD welding program. Mr. Bennett. Okay, thank you and congratulations to the employee and Panthers of the month. Uh, I'm gonna read this. We got uh, Matthew Escada, Mr. Bayar, and uh, Mr. Garcia gonna come up front and make this presentation. And while they're on the way up, I'll read this, uh, what we're doing here. Mr. Philip Hyatt is the owner of Discount Auto Parts at 202 West, well West Wilson Avenue in Aransas Pass. Has been a great supporter of the APISD welding program. Mr. Hyatt has donated welding helmets, a welder, and funds to cover the cost of an overhead door in the welding shop. Uh, we would like to present Mr. Hyatt with a plaque as a token of our gratitude. We would also like to present an additional plaque that is to be displayed in the Keyberg welding facility in recognition of his contributions to the program. The support we receive from our community partners is invaluable. And with this support, we are able to provide the best opportun opportunities for our students. appreciation of continuing investment towards the Aransas Pass ISD students within our welding program. This is uh, for your continuing investment in our district, our appreciation. Keyburger Shop Welding Shop. It says, in grateful appreciation for contributions to the Keyburger CTE Center Welding Shop, donated by Philip Hyatt, September 2023, Francis Pass. Thank you for your continued support of our students and our community. At this time, we have a presentation um, reviewing changes to school zones. And our presenter this evening is the Aransas Pass Police Department Chief, Eric Blanchard. As he is approaching the podium, um, students or parents, if you need to leave, we appreciate you joining us this evening for the portion that you were able to. Have a good evening. Honorable board, uh, good evening. Thank you for allowing me to speak to you. Basically what I wanted to do is the team and I have been researching some of the school zones around our campuses and we wanted to bring to your attention that we're looking at making some modifications and I'm seeking input or feedback, not during this meeting, but maybe outside of this meeting. Uh, I did provide you guys a printout, and the printout shows the current ordinance under the Code of Ordinances for the City of Aransas Pass, and it is marked up so you can see the changes. I've also added notes in there so you can kind of get an idea of what the team and I have come up with as far as these modifications. We've already had a uh, workshop meeting with the council. They seem on board with this and, and some of these changes. They haven't seen this uh, latest markup, but they were given a summary brief of it. I'll do a further illustration showing the maps and the layouts when it goes before council for consideration. And just basically, I'll just brief through it. It's not long at all uh, for the audience and the board. Basically, we're gonna modify the times. We're finding children out and walking before school zones go into effect. So we're gonna drive those back from uh, 
seven thirty to seven in the morning and we're going to eliminate the all day school zones they're unnecessary they're more of an inconvenience to uh, motorists when kids aren't out and about so from seven to eight thirty in the morning school zones will be in effect across the city and between the hours of 3 p.m and 4 30 in the afternoon those uh, school zones will be in effect we're doing a little bit of cleanup there are some of those streets as you can see that are marked through that will be eliminated and no longer school zones. And uh, we're basically cleaning up some of the statutory language so it's more in sync. But again, all school zones will have the same times. The uh, one way, we have one one way, we did eliminate one when you all opened up your new campus, Falk, beautiful place. Uh, so we eliminated one of the one ways there. The existing one way will remain and that will also start and end at the same time, but it will be all day long is the recommendation of staff. One way can be a little bit confusing if it begins and ends periodically throughout the day. Um, you have the printout and I would encourage you to look at it. If you have feedback, criticism or anything that you want to share, please do. Why am I sharing this with you? Because I venture to guess that you guys might also get approached about issues related to traffic and stuff like that at time. I know that the administration does and we try to work with them to mitigate some of those uh, issues. Board, if you have any questions or comments with your pleasure, uh, I'm happy to respond. What is the time frame that you're looking to receive um, input from the district? we're not ready to move on this probably won't move until uh, a meeting maybe in october or later okay. so any time from now till then you can go to our website find the about chief and you can email me directly on there uh, my cell phone number is 361-777-5000 feel free to call text whatever uh, your median is and i'd be happy to respond thank you uh, trustees any other questions comments concerns at this time no, I just have one comment, and that's um, not related to the streets, but in response to our safety program, I know we've come a long way in the last few years, and a lot of that has been with the collaboration and partnership that we have with the police department. You guys have gone above and beyond making sure our buildings are safe, doing audits, uh, meeting with the administration, and making sure that we have re reunification plans in place and the training in place. I want to thank you for all your hard work that you've done with the school district we couldn't do we, it we don't get you here all the time so i just wanted to i appreciate that we couldn't do it without you guys and your leadership that you guys have in place and wayne bennett under kara cook when he took over the security thing did an amazing job creating that relationship so i appreciate the partnership thank you anything else board well thank you uh chief for introducing this to us and giving us a heads up on your efforts to coordinate this um between the city and the district and um, we certainly want to again thank you and your staff and the city for not only partnering with us in the alliance but assisting us for the safety of not only our students but our community and so thank you again for joining us this evening our pleasure Appreciate thank it. you all have a good evening thank you Chief. our next item um, is the board will convene an executive session as authorized by the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code 551.001 concerning any and all purposes permitted by the act. Section 551.074 personnel, resignation, new hire DOI, new hire information, performance evaluation tool for acting superintendent, superintendent search services and process, and under section 551.076 security services and 551.089 deliberation regarding security services or audit the time now is 719 the open session is closed and we will convene convene in executive session the time now is 8 18 p.m we have closed our executive session and we are convening an open session Next item of business, convene an open session and act on any items requiring action from closed session. Consider and approve resignations. Do we have a motion to approve the re resignation? I make a motion to approve the resignation to discuss in executive session. Second it. Motion by Mr. Molinex, second by Mr. Flores. Any further discussion? 
not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Next item, consider and approve a local teaching certificate utilizing the District of Innovation option for a special education teacher at Falk Elementary. Do we have a motion? So move. Second. Motion by Mrs. Hill, second by Mr. Rector. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries. Next item is uh, we're now going into our superintendent's report beginning with enrollment. Mr. Bennett. Okay, you have the uh, enrollment uh, information there in your packet. Uh, as you can see, we're up at the top right, 1718, 1718 uh, district total, and we're at 95% on attendance. So we're, we're right on target, a little, little ahead, so we're doing really good. Um, then, then you have down the uh, side there, you can see the totals for each campus. Um, there's up, we're up 24 kids at the, uh, at the high school, down just a couple at Blunt, and this is from uh, last year at the same time, sorry, yeah, from uh, last year at the same time, we're up about 24 at the high school, down about four at uh, Blunt, up 27 at Charlie Marshall, and down two from the same time as we were last year uh, during this time, and our attendance rate was only at 94, so we're ahead on uh, attendance, the total enrollment, and on our uh, attendance percentage. Any, Any questions? Questions? Okay, if you'll please continue on to the JET grant status update. Okay. We have on here pretty much what you're looking at on your in your packet is if it's in green, we've received it. If it's if it's still out there uh, that means we're waiting on it or as you see at the top electric system upgrade with McWhorter uh, they are still working on that it's ongoing um, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're, we're still on time as far as I know we haven't heard I think they had a walkthrough meeting today with Mr. Divin and uh, Mr. Escada if you have any specific questions about that if you want to ask them they're available for that but they walked with them um, just to see where we're at uh, all that's still progressing. Then at the bottom, you see some of the actual items that are still out that we have not received yet. Trustees, any comments or questions regarding the JET grant update? We, we don't have any projection uh, on when we might get the electrical over there for the welding and all that kind of stuff. You know, that we you know, I mean, you know, it, we're working with the AEP, right, to do that. So do they have any projection when that might be complete? Mr. Devin, you want to come come up and if you have anything, he's been <coughs> di dealing directly with AEP on that and staying on top of them. And like I said, they did a walkthrough with uh, McQuarters today, so he may have a little bit more details on that. Uh, with AEP, um, right now they have a transformer in. They're trying to make it work for what we're needing here. Uh, I won't get an answer on that maybe for another week or two. And then uh, McWhorter is about 99, I would say about 99% done with electricity in the, in the welding shop. So the biggest thing, getting a transformer and then we should be able to hook everything up? Transformer and gear. Gear for McWhorter and transformer for AEP. But other than that, we're, we're there. We're close. And for the health science side on the electrical, it's this it's not green on here. So is that side complete? Uh, electrical and the health science side is complete. The only thing that, that needs to be done um, in the cafeteria side, which is their gear. You know, that's the guts and stuff to their breaker panels. Okay. You good? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Then we have the, the photos. We have a few more photos that we've added. Um, it's progressed a little bit uh, beyond that in the health science. You see there's still a framed up uh, a section there. Now there's, there's actually panel on both sides of those. Uh, it's, it's, it's moving along. Just a process. Anything further, trustees? Well, thank you. We appreciate the update. Yes, ma'am. The 
the next we have um, our upcoming events, that calendar, any additions or changes? I think so. Okay. This is it. Well, thank you. Yes. Discussion with them. Be on there. No. Yeah. That was just clarification if we needed to add something. Um, so now we are moving into our next item of business, which are, oh, I'm sorry, thank you, Mr. Bennett, for the superintendent's update. Next, we'll have our financial reports. Ms. Chapa? <laughs> The first report is the accounts payable report. And this is as of August 31st, 2023. Our total checking account, including the text pools, is 2,522,964. Those checking account balances are a bit low. We're still anticipating a state settle up that will be entered into the 2022-23 books of a million seven hundred and seventy six thousand the TEA settle up is still pending so we still need to include that in when we close the books for 2022-23 our total accounts payable for the month of August was seven hundred and four thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars and as we're closing the year closing out many of the federal grants there was a big expenditure with the JET grant as presented. 229624 was of the JET grant, which was just presented. It was a little bit higher than normal, our expenditures for the month. For the next report, the budget status report for August 31st, 2023, our local revenues are 17,158,254. Our expenditures are 16,536,513. The difference about 600,000 estimated fund balance as we close the year. Food service has a gain. Revenues are reported at 1,432. Expenditures at 1,379. So there's a slight gain there in food service where we could transfer into the local as indirect cost. For the debt side, we were closing the year with 1,604,760. The expenses is 1,577,000. So there's a slight gain in fund balance on the debt side. For our tax collections, our tax collectors reported that we received 43,895,000 dollars of current collections and 13,189,000 dollars of delinquent tax collections. That's collecting at 95.64%. We still have the month of September to collect on the 2023 school year before they become delinquent. For the FEMA projects, we have no update. The last update was the, the claim that was reported in your July report, and we haven't heard back from FEMA, so we do not have any update for FEMA. Um, next month, we'll be calling and seeing if there's any funding coming to us. That's all I have, if there's any questions. I have one question. When, when was the last time that we had a FEMA representative here in our building meeting with us? I am not sure we can call and have one at our next board meeting or in the near future. Mr. Kalman, are you talking about with the board or no, with, with the with district staff, at all? With staff. With staff? Okay. Yeah, with staff. Oh, we're communication through the phone, through email, but not in person. Do we have a laundry list of what they're asking for in order to finalize the claim? We've submitted back in July. 
That was submitted in July. Mm -hmm. They they take a while to process a claim. No, I, under I understand. <clears throat> Is there any information pending from the district that they're waiting on? No, sir. Everything's been submitted. Okay. That's all I have. Trustees, any other questions or comments regarding any of the financial reports? If there's none, we are going to now move on to our consent agenda. And um, Mr. Bennett? Okay, the, uh, the first two items on the consent agenda are again uh, dealing with 4-H. Um, and for this portion, I'm going to um, abstain and let our vice president preside. Go ahead. Okay, th again, we're bringing, uh, this, it's pretty much the same resolution with AgriLife agri uh, Extension. One of these, uh, this first resolution is to allow us to have 4-H as an extracurricular activity, and this is with uh, Ranzas County. The one previous was Sam Pat. Uh, so this first resolution is to let it be an extracurricular activity. Uh, and the, the next resolution that goes with that is uh, so we can have a 4-H. They, they, they uh, assign the adjunct professor uh, so you can have, you can have a, a staff assigned to it where it can be an extracurricular class. Mr. Mullinek, these are standard items. Unless the board has any questions. Yeah, this is something we've, we've done, every, you know, just, every just, kind of, just kind of uh, paperwork. We have to do every year to renew it and that. And we did it last meeting for San Patricio. So this, this, this month we're doing it for Rancis County, same thing. I'd like to make a motion. We approve the resolution to recognize the curricular status of the 4-H organization for Rancis County. Second it. Motion made by Mr. Galvander, second? Second. Second. Second by Mr. Stansbury. All in favor say aye. Aye. Hi. Opposed? <laughs> Next thing on the agenda is kind of going along with that is, is the Aransas County Adjutant Faculty Agreement uh, that uh, we're approving a faculty member. And I think that more so we can get, so when the kids go over there, they get they don't lose credit for school. So right. that, that's one of the things we're doing that for. It's the same thing we did for San Patricio County last, last, last month. So any questions on that? Okay, do I have a motion? To consider and approve the adjunct faculty agreement with Texas A&M Ag Life Aransas County Extension. So motion. Motion made by Mr. Galvin. There a second. Second. Second by Mr. Stansbury. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, motion carries. Next, I'll turn it back over to our president, Mrs. Butler. Next will be our consider and approve the minutes of the August 14th regular board meeting and then August 28th public, uh, public and special board meeting. Ms. Butler. Thank you, Mr. Molnax. Trustees, you have the minutes for review. <clears throat> so we have two sets of minutes for your for board consideration tonight. Minutes of the August 14th, 2023 regular board meeting and then the August 28th, 2023, public and special board meeting. I move that we approve both of them. I second. So we have a motion by Mr. Rector, second by Mr. Molinax to approve both sets of minutes. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries. We're now moving on to our action agenda. The next item for business is consider and approve rescheduling the January and March 2024 regular board meetings. Um, the January regular meeting falls on Monday after our winter break. The March regular meeting falls during spring break 24. So administration is recommending that the January meeting be rescheduled to January 22nd and the March meeting be rescheduled to March 25th. Our January 15th date is actually a district holiday for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. 
Do we have a motion to, re uh, to approve rescheduling the January and the March 2024 regular board meetings? So moved. We have a motion by Mrs. Hill. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Molinax. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries. Next item is consider and approve revised designation of 10 non-business days in 2023 in compliance with House Bill 3033 and the Public Information Act regarding public information requests. Uh, Mr. Bennett? Right. Uh, as you recall, last uh, board meeting we brought this to you to, we had to designate uh, 10 uh, non-business days, uh, which we did went to the uh, RAC meeting on August 16th and they had a, uh, a, a, an attorney there from Walsh Gallegos and he clarified that, that it's per calendar year, not school year. But when you're talking to school people and you tell them you have to have 10 non-business days in a year and, and everybody was in the same boat. So everybody was going back and revising. So we just changed a couple of dates around uh, to, we added November 21st and 22nd. Let me see if I can read them on here better. November 21st, 20th and 21st, then December 18th through the 22nd, then December 27th through the 29th, and that'll give us our 10 days in 2023. And then we'll have to come back next year, but when we, when we approve a calendar, we'll have these days already there, so you'll, you'll know what they are. But that's all we did. We had to just move a couple days to get our 10 days in 2023. Any questions? Comments, trustees? Do we have a motion to approve the recommended revision of the 10 designated non business days, November 20th through 21st, December 18th through 22nd, and December 27th through 29th of 2023? So moved. Motion by Mr. Rector. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Hill. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay? Motion carries. Our next item of business is consider um, and approve the 2023-2024 appraisal calendar appraisers and procedures. And this will be presented by our curriculum director, Ms. Shelley Dominguez. Good evening. Good evening. This is our appraisal calendar that we bring to you each year for your approval. It outlines um, our appraisal process that occurs throughout the year. <coughs> Um, we are already underway. We've had our orientation. Um, we're working on finishing up the goal setting. As you can see, our deadline is September 15th for that. Um, and then observations begin, could, have, could begin by September 1st. So um, this is just um, our procedures, like I said, that we do every year. We follow pretty much the same um, cycle. Uh, and then we do have some things that are required as well um, as far as the procedures that you will see um, certain um, deadlines and guidelines um, that are included in this calendar that follow policy trustees any questions comments If not, do we have a motion to approve the 2023-2024 appraisal calendar, appraisers, and procedures? So moved. Motion by Mr. Molinax. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Flores. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries. Next item of business is consider and approve the memorandum of understanding with the Community Action Corporation of South Texas, Project Ninos, for the Early Childhood Intervention, the ECI program. Mr. Bennett. Okay, this is a memorandum, memorandum of understanding with the ECI uh, Project Ninos, and it is to identify those uh, kiddos that are between zero and three years, actually zero to 21, but it's, it's uh, saying it can go down to zero to three years, uh, where we would uh, identify through child find those children who might be, uh, have some disabilities that are covered 
under here and we would refer them to the uh, ECI where they would be responsible for finding the uh, 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 needed resources to help these children. Uh, it also helps us identify them earlier so we'll know who's coming and what, what we may have to have ready when these children enter our school district. So uh, that's basically what the uh, memor and it, and it is uh, required under the uh, ID, IDEA uh, Individuals with Disability Act. Trustees, we have the MOU before us. Are there any questions? Comments? If not, do we have a motion to approve the memorandum, memorandum of understanding with Community Action Corporation of South Texas, Project Ninos, for the Early Childhood Intervention ECI program? So moved. Motion by Mrs. Hill. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Rector. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries. Now the next item is to consider and approve the donation from Philip Hyatt, owner of Discount Auto Parts, for an over door, overhead door in the welding facility. Mr. Bennett. Right. This is a donation form that kind of makes it official, uh, and, and we present to you to, to, uh, to approve. Uh, it's for the $8,000 that Mr. Hyatt has donated to the school for the Keyberger CTE welding. It's going toward the, uh, specifically toward the uh, garage door that we're going to get have installed. Um, and this is the, uh, again, the donation acceptance form for your approval. Trustees, any questions or comments? If not, do we have a motion to approve the donation from Philip Hyatt for overhead door in the district's welding facility? So moved. Motion by Mr. Mullinex. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Stansbury. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. <clears throat> motion carries. Now, to go along with this, we also have our next item is a budget amendment for the 2023-2024 school year. Ms. Chapa? As mentioned, the gift and donation of $8,000 is being brought in through this budget amendment, as well as a grant that was written through the state funding, PTEC state funding grant of $15,000 was awarded to the school year. It was awarded to the school for 15,000 for the PTEC for textbooks, supplies, and travel. That's all that's in that budget amendment. So trustees, we have this um, budget amendment to actually appropriate the funds of the grant and also the donation. Are there any questions or comments? I move we accept the budget amendment. Okay, we do have a motion by Mr. Stansbury. Do we have a second? Take. Second by Mr. Flores. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Next item of business is to consider and approve the purchase of three new school buses <laughs> through Thomas Bus Company. Mr. Bennett. Okay, this is uh, as we brought to you in our uh, budget discussions, uh, plan in place to purchase three buses uh, and finance them out and uh, over the next two years we'll pay for one up front and then the finance the other two to uh, pay out over the next two years and this is the quote the first part of this these two uh, uh, 10g and uh, 10h kind of go together this is uh, the quote for the first and if, if there's any specifics again uh, uh, Mr. Devin can come up uh, he's been dealing with them but all the, as you can see, they have all the, 
all the uh, best, uh, all the specs that go with the buses are listed there. Um, and this is this is a quote that 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 they uh, that we're bringing to you. It's on the last page there. Uh, it's uh, it's a little more. It's it's one thirty nine nine, but there was some added um, included. included where they put the uh, uh, storage place under the, underneath, and there's seventy eight passenger buses. Correct. 72 all three of them are 72 yes sir with the storage underneath right yes sir is this going is this going through the Bible warden it is correct yes and will the two buses be delivered at the same time that next is, year are they staggered correct. deliveries or are they all at one time the last two uh, no the the last two will be here this year I think we're going to get all three of them this year, right? Correct. We'll what's, get the time frame, at, what's the time frame for delivery? Uh, we'll get one at the end of November. We'll get the other two at the end of October. Three quick. They're needed. <laughs> and that additional, that option for the storage will be on all three buses? Correct. Okay. Any other trustee questions, comments? I do have a question. I wasn't here for the meeting when you presented. So once we purchase these, these three, will, be, will there be future needs to purchase any more within the next year or two? Uh, I think we're going to wait a year. Is that correct, Ms. Chapel? We're going to wait a year, and then we're going to get uh, three more buses for the next three years. So we should have, what was it, six buses within seven years? Is it, this is replacing the 2003 and the 2004 buses. Those are like our oldest buses. The next ones were about 2013. Yes, year. 2012, 2013s. I don't have it in front of me. Yeah. Jason, is there, any, is there are there any types of service plans that you can buy for fleet service when our buses are on the road that if there is an emergency that they have a emergency service that can go out and and help them while they're on the road. I know you went out the last time in yes, Mathis or somewhere, but is there any type of service that we can do on a contract basis to where we can pick up the phone and call someone? There is. Fleet Pride does offer those kind of services. Have Absolutely. you looked at those contracts and see I how have, expensive they are? I have not, but I will. Okay. What's that called? That service called? Fleet Pride. Pride. Pr Fleet Pride. Roadside service, pretty much for 18 wheelers for buses. Bus. Okay. <laughs> Trustees, any other questions, comments? If not, do we have a motion to approve the purchase of three new school buses through Thomas Bus Company? So motion. Motion by Mr. Valvan. Do we have a second? Second. Second in unison. <laughs> do you need a name? I heard Ms. Hill because she's, she's right there. I heard Ms. Hill first. Okay. Motion by Mr. Galvan, second by Ms. Hill. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right. So now we have um, consider and approve resolution regarding a contract for the purchase of financing school buses through Government Capital Corporation. Ms. Chapa. This is for the payment for two school buses. We have the funding for one for the school year, and this will do the funding for the other two school buses when the first payment will be September of 2024 for next year's budget. The second payment will be in the year 2025. Interest rate is 5.175. The borrowing money is 260,000. The, the difference in the cost of the buses and what we are financed financing we will pay through our budget um five percent interest rate so about eleven thousand six hundred per per year of interest rate one of the good things about buying through the buy board we get five percent back from buy board so that'll offset the interest rate that we're going to be paying here
Thank you, trustees. Any questions or comments? Just for public information, if you could go into maybe just a little disclaimer about the buy board. Some people may not know what it is. I mean, other than it's a cooperative, that we don't have to go out for bids because right. we're, we're we're a member. We're part of that cooperative, yeah. purchasing cooperative. So it saves us time. Yes. And I think some of those prices are negotiated also. So it's advantageous for us to, to utilize that and it um, it's a cost savings to the district if we, when we're able to make purchases through the buy board. Any other comments or questions? If not, do we have a motion to approve the resolution regarding a contract for the purchase of financing school buses through Government Capital Corporation? So moved. A motion by Mr. Mullinex. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Rector. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries. Now next we have a uh, consideration and approved contract amendment with Southern Security for security services for the 2023-2024 school year. Mr. Bennett? Okay, this, you have the proposal in your, in your packet and this is basically just, uh, we, we brought you the information in previous uh, meetings and this is the, the result of that RFP process and this is the contract with uh, Southern Securities we wanted to bring to you for approval tonight. Trustees, questions or comments? Do we have a motion to approve the contract agreement with Southern Security for security services for the 2023-24 school year? So moved. Motion by Ms. Hill. Do we have a second? Second. Second, second by Mr. Flores. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Our next item is consider and approve resolution regarding, this is a long one, <laughs> consider and approve resolution relating to establishing the district's intent to reimburse itself for the prior lawful expenditure of funds to furtherance of renovating, improving, and equipping school facilities from the proceeds of one or more serious tax exempt obligations to be issued by the district for authorized purposes, authorizing other matters, um, incident and related thereto, and providing an effective date. Mr. Bennett, Ms. Chapa. Right. Um, as, as the description reads on, on the details here, this, this resolution will allow the district to seek our cost estimates through the assistance of the, assistance of the district's architect and engineer um, of record. And since there may be some initial costs incurred by doing this, this resolution will allow us to reimburse ourselves for those costs. If we continue through the whole process and we, we end up going uh, with our uh, uh, maintenance tax note, we would reimburse ourselves with this. But again, these are, this is the uh, tilt wall, the big items that we've been talking about over the last two or three years. This is just a plan to possibly get the ball rolling to see about getting those things done but we're just bringing this to you for our consideration. Anything to add, Ms. Chapa? Okay. Trustees, comments, questions? If not, do we have a motion to approve resolution relating to establishing the district's intent to reimburse itself for the prior lawful expenditure of funds to furtherance of renovating, improving, and equipping school facilities from the proceeds of one or more series tax-exempt obligation to be issued by the district for authorized purposes, authorizing other matters incident and related thereto, and providing an effective date? So moved. Motion by Mr. Stansbury. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Hill. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. <coughs> now our next item is to consider and approve granting the acting superintendent the authority to hire the architect and engineer of record to oversee projects and seek proposals or bids and or bids through the procurement process for the repairs 
of the tilt walls and stadium lighting. Mr. Bennett. Right, and just for clarification on this, we would yes. not need to hire the architect because we have already procured, you know, the Lamar Womack and, and Todd Brennan as our architect in, in place, but we would go through uh, Mr. Brennan, who would help us get the engineer to come look at our facilities and let us know what needs to be done. We've had, we have had this done prior, but those bids and quotes and probably the condition is outdated, so we will have to bring in uh, uh, engineers to, to uh, tell us exactly what we would need to do to see about this building in particular is a tilt wall building and then uh, AC Blunt is, is, is brick block but um, there are some issues that probably would need to be taken care of and we are actually meeting with Todd this week to kind of talk about some of these things and see exactly where we are. Um, so this, this just uh, uh, gives us the go ahead kind of to get that get that in motion and then the part about if we do see that uh, once we get those initial costs then we could put together a uh, rfp and go ahead and send that out without coming back to the board we're asking permission to go ahead and, and get those initial costs and then going starting the rfp process uh, with that information once we get it Thank you, trustees. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> well, the only the other com the only comment I'd like to make is <coughs> I appreciate what you're doing, but if those if those estimates come in so high that it's not feasible for us to do, I don't know that it would be prudent for us to be going out for RFPs. I think one option would be for the board to consider looking at those first to see if we want to go down that road. It may not be feasible for us to do, and I mean, really don't see for the need for administration to go out for those bids if it's cost prohibitive. I mean, the, the other perspective is time, of course. Sure. It's just the prerogative of the board, but I don't know that it would be prudent for us to do that all in one, one stroke. Just food for thought. I think the Any last time we looked at it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, we were what, around $400,000? I believe, I believe the, the old one combined between Charter Marshall and Blunt was around, under. it was under four hundred, but it was close to $400,000, was not it? Right. Okay. And that was approximately three years ago? Oh, 19. 19. Well, I think we need to get the cost estimates so we know what we got working, you know. I mean, it might be cheaper to build a new building. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. And when we did that, when we when we're talking about um, roughly or right under the 400000 back in 2019, that was just for the tilt walls, correct? That did not include the stadium lighting? Correct. Okay. And... and, and and I understand, and that you're you're absolutely right. We could we could do it either way. We were just uh, uh, like you to consider that if we went out for the RFPs, we can reject them. We don't have to go with them, but we'd have a clearer idea of okay, if we do go for this now, we would have some numbers back from the companies, uh, kind of letting us know what they would be able to do the job for. That that's one consideration. But we don't have to move forward on any of them until y'all approve that. Yes, because over four years, the cost of oh, yeah. um, construction and nature of this work has uh, changed significantly. Would it be um, give the board comfort knowing that if we proceeded with this, uh, reminding us that we reserve the right to reject proposals or bids? Sure. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> So you've already hired an architect. We already got an architect, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, we you don't we, have to approve an architect. Mm -mm. No, that's what that's what he said. Well, I know, but I'm going by what's on yeah, the I'm, way I'm, the uh, deal I'm, was written. I know. Right. That's we talked about that earlier. So let me see if I can rephrase this then. Um, well, first of all, before doing so, are there any thoughts, questions, suggestions?
So do we have a motion granting the acting superintendent the authority to proceed with the architect and record? I'm amending this since we're, he's already hired. He's yes, retained. The, the architect has been retained. So um, motion to approve granting the acting superintendent the authority to work with the architect and engineer and record to oversee projects and seek proposals and or bids through the procurement process for the repairs of the tilt walls and stadium lighting. So motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Galvan, second by Mr. Stansbury. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries. Thank you. Now we have, um, we're at the point of our meeting discussion of topics for future meetings. Trustees? I have one. You know, about a year ago, we talked about looking at the parcel of land at central office and looking to see what the value was, the market value, and possibly moving it. That piece of property has been sitting there for years. I mean, it's, it's not doing us any good. If there's a market for us and we can possibly sell it, to at least get with some realtors, and they don't have to be in town, they can be out of town just to try to give us an idea of what we can possibly do. So I mean, we're, we're sending maintenance over there every month to mow. And I think that time could probably be utilized somewhere else. And we could probably realize some revenue from that. Also to put in the general fund, just something to look at. I know we talked about it over a year ago. Uh, so just for our, um, our audience, the parcel of land is where the formal central office was located on Harrison Boulevard here in Aransas Pass. So as a uh, future topic of discussion is options in consideration of selling that land, Mr. Galvan? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other topics for future meetings? Okay. Well, if there's nothing further, thank everybody for your attendance tonight. It is now, the time is 9.01, and this meeting is now adjourned.